Hi everyone, myself, Surya Sabrina, working as an assistant professor from the Faculty of Agricultural Sciences in Bharat Institute of Higher Education Research. I am handling the course of Agricultural Microbiology. So in this class, we are going to discuss about biofertilizers in agriculture. So biofertilizers is a decent trend for farm women, farm youths and some of the small scale farmers will increase the lot of employment opportunities. On the basis of some of the extension schemes, this provide some instruments like hot air oven, laminar air flow chamber to farmers with the high subsidy. So first we are going to discuss about what is the definition for biofertilizer. It is here preparation certain live or latent cells of efficient strains of nitrogen fixers, phosphate solubilizers and plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. PGPR, when they are applied to soil or treated with seed, they can accelerate certain microbial process. In this way, they can increase the nutrient availability to plant and increase the yield. Next one, classification. So biofertilizers are classified as nitrogen fixing biofertilizer. So coming to nitrogen fixing biofertilizer, asospirinum, Isobium, Astrobacter, Gluconastrobacter. So these are comes under nitrogen fixing biofertilizer. Nitrogen fixing biofertilizer is also called as diisotrophs. So let's we see one by one. So for nitrogen fixing biofertilizers, it is first classification is free living nitrogen fixing biofertilizer. Before that. We should know about what is meant by nitrogen fixation. The atmospheric nitrogen will be fixed by this microorganism in soil is called nitrogen fixation. The next one, biological nitrogen fixation. Biological nitrogen fixation is nothing but fixing of atmospheric nitrogen in the soil by the means of microorganism or living organism. That is called biological nitrogen fixation. So free living means an organism will live freely or independently and fix atmospheric nitrogen. Example is Astrobacter, Bajerinchia, Clostridium, Clepsilia, Anabena, and Nostoc. Next one, symbiotic. Symbiotic means they are benefited each other. They are mutualistic in nature. Example is Rhizobium and the Franchia. So Rhizobium will be produce the special structure in plant, especially in plant root, is called root nodules. So Frankia will also produce the nodules, but not in legume plants, it is non-legume plants, such as Casuarina and Alnus species. Next one, associative symbiotic. The example is Asospirulum. Associative symbiotic means it can either free, free living or sometimes attach to the host and fixing atmospheric nitrogen. Next one is endophytic. Endophytic means they can present inside or any part of the plant. Example is gluconostrobacter. So this gluconostrobacter will present only on the crop having sucrose content above 30%. Each. For free living nitrogen fixing bacteria, you should collect the soil sample. That soil is called rhizosphere soil. You will collect from the soil around the root surface. Next one is symbiotic. A symbiotic means you will collect that root nodules because it's having some association with the plants and produce the root nodules. Then associative symbiotic means you will collect the sample from rhizoplane region. Rhizoplane region means soil adhering root particles or the root bits of the crop. Next one is endophytic means you collect any parts such as leaf, sugarcane juice or sugarcane buds, you, you, cut, you, you will collect the sample and you isolate the gluconostro factor. Next one, phosphate solubilizing biofertilizers. So both bacteria and the fungi can solubilize the phosphorus. Solubilizing means the conversion of unavailable form of phosphorus and to available form of phosphorus. So that is called solubilization. So these are the some bacteria that involves in the phosphate solubilizers. Okay, first one is Bacillus megatherium, variety phosphaticum, Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus circulans, 
pseudomonastriata. Then some of the, these fungi also solubilizing phosphate. The phosphate is the available form of phosphorus. Penicillium species, Aspergillus avamuri. So, so these are the some example of fungi who solubilize the phosphorus. Our Indian soil is rich in phosphorus, but it is in unavailable form. These microorganisms will make avail to the plant. Next one is phosphate mobilizing by fertilizer. So after solubilizing, phosphorus mobilizing will occur. So this phosphorus mobilizing will be done by following microorganisms. First one is herbicular mycorrhizae. So mycorrhizae, myco means fungi, rice means roots. Fungus association with the roots that is called mycorrhizae. This term was coined by Frank. He also isolated that Frankia. So that is one of the root nodding bacteria. Okay, fine. So herbicular mycorrhizae means in previously it is called as vesicular herbicular mycorrhizae. So it having vesicles and herbicles. Vesicles are bulb-like structure and herbicles are finger-like structure. That is vesicles is used to store the nutrients and herbicules that is used to transport the nutrients. Some of the species of AM mycorrhizae is Glomo species, Gigaspora species, Aqualaspora species, Scrutulispora species and Sclerosis species. Next one is ectomycorrhizae. So this in previously we studied about herbicular mycorrhizae. So that one is endomycorrhizae because it present inside the plant. But ectomycorrhizae means this association will be happen outside of the plant. The example is Lacaria species, Pistola species, Boletus species and Amanita species. So these ectomycorrhizae doesn't have vesicles and herbicules. Instead of that, it having hartignet. Hartignet means fungus can penetrate into the root cortex for their nutrients. Next one is ericoid mycorrhizae. It is classified under ectomycorrhizae. So the example is Pisicilla ericae. Next one, orchid mycorrhizae. The example is Rhizectonia solani. These ericoid and orchid mycorrhizae comes the category under ectomycorrhizae. Then some of the microbes will solubilize macro and micronutrients of examples silicate and zinc solubilizers. Bacillus species involves in this activity. Next one is plant growth promoting mesobacteria. So both Asospirillum, Rhizobium, Astrobacter, or Bacillus, all are comes under plant growth promoting mesobacteria. But the ideal species is called Pseudomonas. So plant growth promoting mesobacteria means the microorganisms, especially in rhizosphere, present in rhizosphere region, so that's why it is called as rhizobacteria, will promoting the plant growth as well as they will they withstand from pest and the disease. So why I take that ideal example, pseudomonas fluorescence means the pseudomonas fluorescence will solubilize the phosphorus as well as it is used as biocontrol agent. Next one, methylotropes. So it is called as pink pigmented facultative methylotropes. So these pink pigmented facultative methylotropes will be tolerant to drought condition or it makes tolerant to drought condition of plants. So this applied the plants through the foliar spray. So it produced the pink color pigments inside the plant leaf. So that will prevent or reducing the rate of transpiration in plants. So rhizobium. So rhizobium, it is a common name of the nodulating microsymbiont, which consists of six genera as rhizobium, broadi rhizobium, mesorhizobium, xenorhizobium, allorhizobium, asorhizobium. So based on the host, this rhizobium will be nodulate. The example is soya bean, this broadi rhizobium will be nodulate. Then azorhizobium, so that is the stem nodulating species. So especially it will be nodulate in sesbania. Isobium are aerobic, that means presence of oxygen, gram negative. So here gram negative means in the cell wall, it consists thin layer of peptidoglycan and a more amount of LPS layer, that means lipopolysaccharide layer. At the, at the time of gram staining, it produced a pink color. And also it is non-sporulating. It does not produce any spores and the rod shaped bacteria which form specialized structures are called as root nodules. So these uh, root nodules, in this root nodules, leguminoglobulin is present. So that is the oxygen scavenger of this root nodules. 
NIF genes. NIF genes means rather than fixing genes is responsible for root nodulation. If you had a NIF genes and insert any crop, so that the crop will be fixing the atmospheric nitrogen. So these nodules will be classified under several category. So some of the nodules are small and round or oval shaped. So these type of nodules will found in clover crops. Some of the nodules are large, round and firmly attached to the root. So these type of nodules will found in cowpea, common bean and soya beans. Some of the nodules are finger like structure. So these nodules are found in alfalfa and peas crops. Morphological observation of rhizobium. So after isolating the rhizobium, these are the morphological obser observation which is found in that petty plate. So the colonies are uh, circular, raised and the white translucent colonies will indicate rhizobium. So in that same medium, red color and the small colonies are agrobacterium. So uh, for isolating the rhizobium, you are following several prescriptive tests so, uh, because uh, morphologically, this agrobacterium and rhizobium are look similar. So, based on that prescriptive test only, you will confirm the growth of rhizobium. You see, in this picture, will show the root nodules. Next one, the petri plate view of rhizobium. So, here you see that circular rice a white color translucent colonies. Next biofertilizer, it is associative symbiotic biofertilizer that is asospirulum. Asospirulum are gram negative, associative symbiotic, micro aerophilic, nitrogen fixing organism. Micro aerophilic means it requires very low amount of oxygen for their growth. Dobriner, who was first isolated this organism. The cells of asospirulum are comma or spiral shaped, having abundant accumulation of poly beta hydroxy butyrate 70 percentage in its cytoplasm the important species of asospirillum are asospirillum dracilens asospirillum lipofurum asospirillum amazonens asospirillum haloprifrens and asospirillum iracens so these species will be classified based on the place of isolates the great example is asospirillum dracilens that was isolated from brazil Asospirillum iracians, that's are isolated from Iraq. Asospirillum halofibrin, that is somewhat different. So that is salt tolerant species. Next one, the morphological observation of asospirillum. The color of the medium. So the, com coming to the point of the medium, the suitable medium for rhizobium, that is EMA medium, yeast extract manitol agar medium. For asospirillum, that is NFB medium. So in this medium, uh, it's from yellow greenish to blue color for the formation of subsurface white color pellicles. You see, this is the medium. So, and the color changing is also there and also it produces the subsurface pellicles. Next one, acetobacter. It is acetobacter, we already discussed. It is a non-symbiotic, so it is a free-living aerobic nitrogen-fixing bacterium. It is a gram negative and also polymorphic. So it doesn't have any morphological character. It may be rod shape or oval shape. It will change the morphological character. And also it forms cyst and also accumulate polyhydroxy butyrate and produce the abundant gum. So this, uh, this biofertilizer only a producing the gum. In addition to nitrogen fixation, it will secrete that plant growth hormones with IAA, indolestic acid, gibralic acid, and the growth factors with thiamine, riboflavin, etc. and produced some antifungal antibiotic also. What is meant by antifungal antibiotic? That means that kills some of the fungus. So some of the, so mostly this astrobacter will be produced the pigments. Okay. So several species are there. Before that, uh, we have to see the several species. The astrobacter crococum is the dominant species found in the tropical soil. So we see one by one what group of uh, asospirillum will produce what type of pigment. So first species is astrobacter crococum. It will produce black color pigments because of the melanin content is more. Next one, astrobacter vinylandi. It produced yellow color pigments. Next one, astrobacter bejerinki. It produced green yellow fluorescent pigments. Next one, Astrobacter insigens, it produced yellow brown pigments. 
then astrobacter macrozytogens that will produce the pink color pigments astrobacter paspadi that is produced the pink to green fluorescent pigments so you see this is the different pigments produced by the different species of astrobacter black pink yellow brown okay so the next one is gluconostrobacter diastrophicus so gluconostrobacter diastrophicus means that is endophytic nitrogen fixing bacterium it is often called as endosymbiotic nitrogen fixing bacterium so it was first isolated from the sugar growing regions of brazil Gluconostrobacter diastrophicus strains were isolated from the samples of sugar rich crops like sugar cane sweet potato pineapple and wild cane and it produced indole acetic acid these organisms can tolerate up to 30 percentage sucrose concentration and pH is very low it is 3.0 it can be isolated from sugar rich crops like sugar cane sweet potato pineapple and wild cane morphological observation of gluconostrobacter diastrophicus it produced subsurface pellicles and later the pellicle will be moved to surface and becomes orange the suitable medium for uh, gluconostrobacter diastrophicus that is lgi semi solid medium so what is meant by solid semi solid or liquid medium so solid medium means uh, the agar concentration is more it is around 15 to 20 percentage semi solid medium means that is 0.0 to 0.3 percentage of agar liquid medium there is no agar liquid medium is often called as broth so the producing subsurface pellicle later this pellicle will be moved to surface and becomes orange see this pigment of astrobacter in the petri plate will containing lga medium and that morphological observation of astrobacter next one pink pigmented facultative methylotroph it is called as ppfm so bacteria of the genus methylobacterium are facultative methylotrophs coming under the group of alpha proteobacteria methylobacterium strains are commonly found in soil as well as on the surface of leaf of a wide variety of plants these bacteria are capable of growing on methanol and methylamine as well as on a variety of c2 c3 and c4 plants these organisms flourish well on the leaf surface by utilizing methanol present in the leaf surfaces hence this bacterium can be isolated from leaf surface as a phyllosphere bacterium so coming to this ppfm so uh, before that we studied about some of the biofertilizers like asospirinum rhizobium uh, astrobacter gluconostrobacter so all are isolated from rhizosphere uh, this gluconostrobacter only isolated from rhizosphere as well as phyllosphere but this P ppfm is only isolated from phyllosphere region phyllosphere region means above the plant rhizosphere means below the plant so this is the petri plate view of pink pigmented facultative methylotropes you see the pink pigments so isolation technique of ppfm is different so the isolation techniques will followed by leaf imprinting technique so that means first you have to prepare the medium so what is the medium for uh, ppfm means ams that is ammonium mineral salt medium first you have to pour the medium into the petri plate then allow it for solidification after solidification you should be uh, done leaf imprinting in this petri plate so the so then only the pigment should be like this so the, you see this so now the entire leaf portion uh, with their uh, veins will be displayed as a ppfm so next one is mass production so the mass production means you have to production more number of biofertilizers for the farmer uses okay so method of mass production of bacterial biofertilizers so it involves preparation of inoculum mass production of biofertilizers in broth mixing of broth with carrier material packing in polythene cover and the storage so preparation of inoculum preparation of inoculum means you should isolate this whatever biofertilizers you want you must be isolated next one is mass production of biofertilizer in broth 
So broth, I already discussed it. So the medium without agar, that is called broth. So broth is also called as liquid medium. So what are the suitable medium? For isobium, that is ema medium. For isospirillum, that is NFB medium. For gluconostobacter, that is LGA medium. For astobacter, that is Waxman base medium number 77. For PPFM, you should use AMS medium, ammonium mineral salt medium. For protection of PGPR, you, uh, example is pseudomonas, you use King's B medium. Then mixing of broth with carrier material. So carrier material such as lignite, peat soil, and the talcum powder. So in this talcum powder, you don't add any flavor. Then packing with the polythene, stick, the polythene cover, they having some quality control is that we will discuss it later. Okay. So this is so this is the instrument. So that is called a fermenter. So this fermenter will be used for large scale of production of biofertilizer. So now uh, the fully automated, full automated uh, fermenter is also there. So manually operated fermenter is also there. So these are the parts of fermenter. So first of all, acid base that is used to check your pH. And the stirrer, stirrer so used to mix the solvents, then top plate is there, and the culture medium, then pre aged prop, then temperature prop, you should uh, check the temperature, and the impeller, you should to mix the broth and the culture, the cooling jacket, then uh, maintaining that, that is used to maintain the temperature of fermenter, then harvesting pipe, you should harvest after fermentation, you should harvest the culture, then air inlet is there, and also sampling point. So sampling point is used to collect the samples and check the growth of the bacteria. Then mm -hmm. oxygen sensor. So oxygen sensor, if, if the oxygen is present, means uh, entire the fermentation is collapsed because fermentation is an anaerobic process. That means absence of oxygen. Then inoculation probe and antifoam. So if any foam will be present, you use it as an antifoam. So in, uh, in previously, we used vegetable oil as an antifoam agent, vegetable oil or as mineral oil. These are the parts of fermenter. So preparation of inoculum and the mass production of biofertilizer. So prepare required quantity broth and adjust the pH of that particular biofertilizer. Then pour or pump the broth into the fermenter vessel after collect closing the outlet valve and the sampling valve. Keep the air outlet valve open and increase the temperature of broth by stream generator. Close the air outlet valve and allow the pressure to build up the vessel. And maintain a pressure of 15 LBS, 121 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. So that is for sterilizing. So normally it is followed in moist heat sterilizer. So especially in autoclave. Switch off the steam generator and allow the broth to get cool by circulating cool water through cooling coil. Spray the alcohol on the inoculation port and flame it. Allow the inoculum port to cool and inoculate the inoculums into fermenter vessel for actively grown culture in 5 liter flask in the aseptic condition. The rate of inoculum is added 5 to 10 percent. It is the mother culture. Okay. Then switch on the air pump, regulate the air flow of the broth which provides aeration as well as agitation of the growth of culture. Then incubated in at room temperature, three to five days for rhizobium. If it is asospirillum and bacteria, you should use five to seven and two to three days for bacteria respectively. Draw sample and analyze the growth periodically. So the bacteria are having several growth curves are there. First one is lag phase, second one is log phase, third one is stationary phase, and the fourth one is declared phase. In this lag phase is the vegetative phase. So the bacteria will ready to uh, what is it called uh, reproduction. So the bacteria bacteria reproduction will be done by binary fission. Okay. So for log phase, that reproduction will be takes place. The growth uh, great rate is only there. There is no death rate. And stationary phase, the growth rate will be maintained. So the curve is the maintained curve. And finally, decline, the death rate will be occurred. Next one is, one, once the broth obtain maximum growth, turn off the air supply. Check the quality of broth. There should not be any fungal or any other bacterial contamination. 
draw the culture broth from the outlet valve and mix the carrier material should not store fermenter broth more than 24 hours even at 4 degrees celsius so mixing of broth with carrier material so before that in this mass production of fermenter if the population at the initial time it is uh, 10.4 10 to the power of 4 if if the cells Uh, range is increased from 10 to the power of 9 you should stop the fermentation okay so that is the ideal thing you should be followed out at the time of fermentation so mixing of broth with the carrier material so already i said that the carrier materials are lignite peat soil and the talcum powder the main important thing is in talcum powder you, you should not add any flavor because now using ponds google sand and like lot of talcum powder so they adding some flavor okay so the use of ideal carrier material is necessary for the protection of good quality bio fertilizer lignite peat soil vermiculite charcoal pressmer fom and the soil mixture are used as carrier material so before we use the carrier material you should sterilize this carrier materials also spread neutralize and sterilize the carrier material in a clean metallic or plastic tray the bacterial culture drawn from the fermenter is added to the sterilized carrier and mixed well by manual or by mechanical mixer the culture broth is mixed with the carrier material to obtain moisture content 40 to 50 percentage and allowed for curing for 2 to 3 days at room temperature by spreading the carrier based bio fertilizer on a clean floor or polythene sheet for 2 to 3 days at room temperature after curing it is packed right packing so coming to packing so the weight of the bio fertilizer packet is 200 g of carrier based bio fertilizer in polythene bags and sealed with the electric seal then poly bags should be low density grade and the thickness is around 50 to 75 microns each bio fertilizer should be marked with the name of the manufacturer and product so these are the quality standards first the polythene bag should be have a strain number that is used to easily identify the bacteria so what is the role of the strain number so the strain number will be given by mtcc that is microbial type culture collection that is located in haryana for especially for only for india so why the strain number is used means for example asospirum lipofurum asospirum insignis so there are a lot of species there so whatever species so each species having a different characters so you should identify it. this species will be used for this land so then only you will identify that uh, species based on strain number the next one is the crop to which is recommended so for pulse crop highly recommend you should highly recommend the rhizobium because it increase the root nodulation process for asospirum it is highly recommended for uh, rice crop then method of inoculation so what is the method to inoculate this one and date of manufacture and batch number then date of expiry when it expire and the manufacturer address and price and the storage instruction so storage instruction coming to the storage instructions so this bio fertilizer will not keep more excess sunlight if you keep it in excess sunlight means the microorganism will be killed so it should, you should maintain a room temperature for storage then storage of bio fertilizer packet so the packet should be stored in a cool place away from direct sunlight or heat the cell density at the time of packing it is 10 to power of 9 per gram of cells dry carrier material at the time of expiry that is 10 to the power of 7 cells per gram of dry carrier material so i already explained about this population so at the time of when the ferment at the time of fermentation the population will be increases in 10 to the power of 9 or more means you should stop the fermentation how you check out the population because of that growth curve okay so growth curve so the you have to collect the sample uh, sam from the sampling point then you will be check out the population then you should be draw the growth curve that then you calculate the germination time or generation time. okay gt then you should be uh, practically worked out the time required when the population is reached 10 to the power of 9 to 10 to the power of 7 so that basis only you would be fix the expiry date next one quality control of bio fertilizers 
So quality checks in three parts. First one is mother culture test or growth purity. Second one, broth test, check pH, optical density, total count, and viable count. Viable count will be the visible count. The next one is peat test, pH, moisture content, viable number, plant infection method, that is MPM, that is called most probable number technique. So various formulations of biofertilizer. So after packing, uh, we have to prepare this various formulation. First one is clay balls, which should prepare as a clay balls. Second one is alginate immobilized formulation. Third one is carrier based formulation. Fourth one is cyst formulation. Fifth one is spore formulation. The spore formulation is especially denotes for RAM. Then liquid formulation. So nowadays this liquid formulation especially used for biofertication. Biofertication means application of biofertilizers along with the irrigation water. Then mixed bioinoculants or microbial consortia. The mixing of nitrogen mixing biofertilizer and the phosphate cellulizing biofertilizer at their uh, microbial consortia. Then pre-coated seeds such as used seed pelleting done with the bioinoculants. See this, these are the packets. First one is liquid and this is solid and also the alginate beads. Pictures will be in shows various formulations. Okay. Next one. What are all the methods of biofertilizer application? So the first method is seed treatment. So seed treatment. So you should do, uh, do the seed treatment along with any one of the biofertilizer. Uh, where you, uh, so for seed treatment, uh, you should use uh, three packets. Each packet is having 200 gram and add rice gruel and mix the seed required for the nectar area. And keep it for 12 hours under uh, dry condition and you will be sure. So for the time of storage, you will not expose it into sunlight. Okay, keep in a dark region. Next one is seedling dip method. Third one is soil application method. For soil application method, you will be uh, mixed with the bioinoculants 50 kg along with soil Then you should done the broadcasting. Then biofertigation, application of biofertilizer along with irrigation water that is called biofertigation. So this is especially done in drip irrigation method. See this, various formulas, so you see the seedling dip is there and also soil application is there. So the third picture denotes uh, that the bio, bio asola will be applied in rice field. So what are the constraints of biofertilizers? First one, the farmer acceptance and the satisfaction, it's uh, very low for biofertilizer. Second one is no updated knowledge for farmer. So now, nowadays, that KVK, Kusi Vigyan Kendra will give training about this biofertilizer, how you should produce, how you should apply, the, uh, apply it into the field, how uh, the employment opportunities from this biofertilizer. So kindly please use it. Next one, gap between lab to land process. Then timely availability. Uh, timely availability of biofertilizers is, is risk. The next one is environmental constraints. Then marketing constraints. So mostly marketed people, uh, will be developing the chemicals only. So in this class, we are discussing about uh, what is meant by biofertilizers. So what are the different types of biofertilizers? So what is meant by nitrogen fixing biofertilizers? What is meant by phosphate replacing biofertilizers? And uh, what is meant by methanotropes? And uh, what are the methanotropes used for crop? And also what is meant by mass production and uh, method of application? And uh, what are all the constraints of biofertilizers? So thank you, we will discuss an interesting topic in the next class.